So we talked about how fixed grids have a problem, um, and it's that they can't accommodate different kinds of screens. So we want to start considering something called responsive design, which means that you design um, in advance so that if someone accesses your website on a different kind of device than you may have anticipated, it will show up in a way that's still um, beautiful and makes sense and delivers your content and doesn't get all wonky. So here's the idea. You are designing so that everybody has the best experience on their device. So if you have someone accessing with a traditional computer or laptop, you can know that you have a lot of room to spread out from left to right. Um, if they're using a tablet, maybe some of that stuff starts to become vertically displayed. And if they're accessing with a phone, maybe that stuff becomes even more vertically displayed just straight down the page because you don't have a lot of room from left to right. And now technically with tablets and phones, you can actually detect the orientation. So if they're a portrait, like shown in this picture, then you can have stuff more vertically displayed. If they're a landscape or rotated, then you can spread stuff out from left to right. And the way that you really accomplish this is by using CSS to change the size of elements on the page, to hide them, to shrink them, to grow them, and to move stuff around so that it maintains a good appearance, no matter what kind of device they're using to access it. Okay. Um, an important concept when you're using this um, is that of the viewport, which means the visible area of the web page. Um, most of the time, that's going to be the, the full screen of the device. But if somebody's got their browser, you know, sunk over to the left-hand side of their laptop, it's going to be look more like a, a tablet screen than a laptop screen. So you need to be aware that resizing the browser can also be an issue that you should can be considering. Okay. Um, and the main thing that we want to do is that a user shouldn't be forced ever to scroll horizontally and we don't want to have to make them zoom in and out. Okay. So here um, on the left here is a picture where this is not really great. Um, it's very small. It's not taking full advantage of the space you actually have. Um, here is a display of the same content taking into account the size of the device and that wouldn't require anybody to zoom in to see it. Okay. So to set the viewport, um, you use this meta tag. The meta tag is generally for stuff that is not um, specifically what's displaying on the page, but additional information that can be used. So we're gonna have the meta tag, its name is gonna be viewport, so we can control that. And we're gonna tell the content to um, set the width equal to the device width. That way it will um, basically make the width of the page follow however wide the device is that we're looking at. And we want um, the zoom to be set to 1.0. So we want initial scale equal to 1.0 when, uh, when they view the page when it's loaded. Okay, so that's step one. Um, so once we do this, there are some general rules that should be followed so the stuff doesn't get crazy. I mean, you can break it even if you're setting the viewport. So the first thing is we don't want to use large fix with elements. So you're not going to put something on the page and tell it it has a, a width of 1,000 pixels. Okay. Um, you don't want to depend on a screen being a certain width in order for your page to look good and be like, well, I don't care if somebody's accessing it with the phone, then they can just look bad, whatever. Um, and we're going to use CSS media queries to apply different styles for small and large screens, and we'll get into that later. So we've looked at a grid before. Um, we're going to create our own grid this time that's flexible so it can accommodate different um, viewport sizes. Um, but we're still going to be dividing the page into columns. So the first thing we're going to do is select everything on the page, which is what this asterisk does. And we're going to set box sizing to border box. And that makes actually the calculations for the width and height of the elements actually include padding and borders so we don't have to think about the width of the content plus the padding plus the border and our sizes as we specify them so this just makes it a little bit easier to deal with okay um, then we're going to figure out how many columns do we want so if we're doing like a 12 column page um, then we need to figure out the width of one column that's some easy math so if the full page is 100 percent you just divide by the number of columns, which in this case is 12. And so each column for a 12 column page should be 8.33%. Okay. 
Okay. So the next step is to make one class for each of the 12 potential widths, one column, two column, three column, whatever. We're going to use a naming convention that's very similar to what they did in 960 GS. So we'll start um, each of the classes with a col and then a hyphen to represent column. And then we'll follow it with a number representing how many columns that section should span. And it's going to end up looking something like this. So if it's a one column, it'll be called dot col dash one, and the width will be 8.33, and then so forth down through 12. The way I'm getting these numbers is by multiplying by however many columns um, we're talking about. So it's always 8.33 times whatever number that I have here. Okay. So you will have to create this style rules for yourself. Okay. And then we have one other thing we have to do to that particular class, which is that we want to control um, its padding and we want to control the floats so that they will sit next to each other. So this is a, a fancy selector. Um, it starts with a square bracket and, and class um, asterisk equals. This means if a class name starts with col dash because you'll notice we named all of them col dash and then a number so this will grab all of those classes then i want to tell them to float left so that they'll sit next to each other i'm going to give it a padding of 15 pixels and a border of one pick solid red just so we can see where they are while i'm setting them up that will look probably terrible later on and you'll want to change that style but just so you can see what you're doing when you're creating them i'm going to take it i get to give them a border again because we set the box sizing Previously, this padding will still be incorporated in the width um, so it doesn't grow too big and make everything not sit right on the page. Okay, and then one other thing, since I've made everything float now, I need a way to knock stuff down on the page. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a class called row, and I'm going to... Um, focus that with the word after so that when I have this class called row, anything after it, I'm going to knock down the next line by setting content to quote, quote, clear to both and display to block. And that will have the effect of knocking down the next row when I'm ready for it in my design. Okay. And so here is kind of what it will look like in my HTML. Instead of using um, empty divs to knock stuff down like the grid uh, 960 GS system did. Instead, I'm going to surround each of my rows with a special div that has class row. And then inside that, I will specify the particular sections. So here I've got a call three and a call nine. These two numbers um, need to add up to 12 since I've got a 12 column design. And um, they will sit next to each other because of the float property.